welcome to the With Flow podcast, a weekly show for purpose-driven women who are ready to embrace a feminine approach to business. We'll be chatting all things cycle awareness and using your intuitive superpowers, combined with the more practical aspects of business, like systems and planning. I'm your host, Laura, from Business With Flow, cyclical business mentor and systems queen. My mission is to show you that business can be fun and easy, that you can do it in a way that is right for you and feel inspired, organized, calm and in control. So let's jump into this week's episode. Hello and welcome to episode 62 of the With Flow podcast. This week, I am speaking to Mel Daniels. Now, if you don't know Mel, Mel is a content strategist, coach, and speaker. Mel teaches and empowers women who want more from their business, how to use and create content in a genuine way. She gives them the confidence they need to become more visible, seen as the expert that they are, and inspired to take their business to the next level. Now, if you're listening to this, you probably have your own business and you understand that content is super important. So today's episode, Mel and I dived into all things creating intentional, powerful and purposeful content. So let's jump into the episode. Mel, welcome to the With Flow podcast. It's so lovely to have you here. Thank you so much, Laura. It is an absolute honor to be here. Thank you. So we were obviously just chatting before we hit record about how we have so much that we could talk about in today's episode. So I don't think we're going to run out of topics to cover, but we are going to dive in today into content creation, creating powerful content for your business, which of course is your jam. So I would love to start by asking or having a little chat about when it comes to content and content marketing in our businesses, why is it important and what is the job of our content? Because I think this is something that does tend to trip people up a little bit when they're thinking about and trying to plan and create their content. Oh, most definitely. And I guess the first thing that I really want to say here is no matter what business you have, no matter what you do, we are all content creators because it has such an important part in our business. And basically content is like the cash flow for our business. So if we're not creating it, if we're not actually showcasing who we are, then people don't know who we are and we don't make the sales. So I really think that content has two main purposes. And the first is to really showcase who we are. So that's our personality, our branding, what we stand for and what we don't stand for as well, all of those things so that people can really get to know who we are and what we stand for as well. But the other main purpose of our content is really to use it to get our client from not knowing anything about us all the way through to becoming a raving fan. So what I'm talking about here is looking at content as the way that we actually move our client through that client journey with us. So where we first get to connect with them, We get them to subscribe to our email list. Then we have the opportunity to nurture them. We convert them and then the onboarding process um, afterwards. So content plays a really huge part in basically getting us sales. Absolutely. And I love that you talk about the client journey because something that I see a lot of, and particularly when people are in launch mode, is that all of their content is just buy my thing, buy my thing, buy my thing, buy my thing. (laughs) And they haven't taken the time to uh, nurture their audience, like take them on Mm -hmm. that journey and help them identify whether the thing that you are selling is something that they actually need and helping them sort of work through that process. So when it comes to talking about the client journey, what are some of the things maybe you've seen people doing or how do you like to explain it to people of being able to create content in alignment with what that journey looks like for someone rather than just, I may think, I may think. <laughs> yes. And it's so true, right? One of the most popular questions I get asked is, how do I create content that converts? And my answer to that is, you need to create content that first connects. 
that first subscribes, that first nurtures before you can create content that converts. I think people forget that it's more about relationship building. It's more about understanding there is a human behind every single piece of content you create. And if you just think about your own way of how you like to consume content and how you like to be treated with email marketing, with social media, with podcasts, whatever it is, the content that you consume. When that person who is creating the content is taking the time to really understand who you are as a consumer and how you like to consume the content, then it really makes a huge difference on the journey that you go with them. So I think that we all get kind of drawn into that trap when we're in launch mode of doing the promotion, the promotion, the promotion, the promotion. And that's okay as long as you have done the building blocks beforehand. And I know that you yourself, Laura, are so amazing at teaching that launch process and, you know, the pre-launch things and the promotion things and then the post-launch things. But when we don't take the pre-launch into consideration and what we could be doing to really start to connect and nurture our ideal client, we will fall flat at that promotion stage, a hundred percent. Not only will people get really annoyed at, you know, constantly being sold to, they're not going to feel like they're ready for it. And that's our job to make sure that our ideal clients are in that space and they are ready to purchase not only the thing that we have, but the thing that we have from us as well, because we're all unique, right? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Um, it's nodding along the with <laughs> everything you were saying, because it, it can be hard, right? When you start a business and all of a sudden you feel like you have to be everywhere on Instagram, on Facebook, on Pinterest, maybe you have a blog or a podcast and an email list. And sometimes you can get so caught up in creating the content that exactly as you said, you forget that there is someone on the other end of that, an actual human being. You forget about the connection and the building of the relationship with someone. And you're just mm. straight in there with, Hey, buy my thing. Um, okay. rather than taking the time as you, you know, if you met someone in real life, whether it was, you know, at a business event or just at a barbecue, you wouldn't walk up to them and straight away go, Hey, buy my thing. You'd take the yes. time to get to know them. So. A hundred percent. Yeah, I think yes. sometimes we forget about that and it's easy to forget about that when we are, you know, on Instagram or recording podcasts by ourselves in our offices at home, that there is a human yes. being on the other end and it is, you know, that relationship building and that connection piece is so, so important. Yeah. And I really do believe that. I feel like when we move away from the transactional focus of content marketing to one that's built on relationships. Not only does it make us feel good, it also makes our ideal client feel good as well. And we can really experience so much business and personal growth. I feel like when we take that shift in perspective as well, like what I teach is, is nothing, it's not rocket science. It's just a different perspective because I think that we have been taught very early on in our business journeys that, you know, there is a particular way of doing things and, you know, you have to have a sales funnel and this is what it has to look like. And this is what you should be doing. And if you don't do these things, you won't be successful. And I really do call that out. I, I call that out because I feel like business as your podcast and your business is business with flow. It really should be with flow. It should be a reflection of what we want our lives to be. It should be an extension of who we are and not something that's, you know, over there, our business, as opposed to us, it's, it's, it's part of us. Um, so yeah, I think that when we kind of take a step back from all of that, that's pushed into our faces and just say, no, I don't have to do it that way if I don't want to and, and take that relationship, um, perspective with our content marketing. It makes a world of difference to how you actually turn up and approach it as well. I think that people, when they give themselves that space and say, yes, it's okay that I don't have to be doing all of these things and I don't have to do it this way and I can do it my own way. It really gives them the space to turn up with joy. And that's what I want for everyone as well. I don't want content to be heavy and burdensome and something you have to do. I want it to be something that you want to do or you want to outsource, but you know, you want to make it such a huge part of your business. Yes, absolutely. Agree with everything you said. 
you know, and anyone who listens to this podcast or follows me on Instagram will know one of the things that I say over and over again is you don't have to listen to what everyone on the internet tells you. You have mm-hmm. to do to have a successful business. You're allowed to pick and choose the strategies and doing things in a way that feels good for you. Because when you do the things that feel right and good, you'll actually go through with it rather than trying to force yourself to do something that someone else did and it worked great for them but their skills their talents how they like to show up how they connect is different from you so yes I love I love everything you said about that so one of the things I think a lot of people struggle with and you know I'm gonna say I put my hand up that this happens to me as well from time to time is particularly when it comes to social media is creating content that has a purpose that is intentional and again Mm -hmm. coming back to that client journey and being able to stand out from all of the noise we know what it's like right you get on instagram you're just scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and i myself you know a few months ago i got really disillusioned with instagram because i felt like every time i was posting something it was just disappearing into the ether and I actually stopped posting for a while because I just didn't want to contribute to the same stuff and the same conversations and the same thing everyone else was saying yeah. and just that constant noise online. So do you have any um, tips or any advice on how we can step out of that and be more purposeful and intentional with how we create our content? Mm. I do. I do. So I have a practical example, but I want to speak to the emotional side of things first. So we all get to a point where we feel a little bit overwhelmed with content and content creation. And that is a very real thing. It is a very, very real thing. And I want to acknowledge that because I love doing it. I love creating it. I love putting it out there. I love teaching it, but I understand that for a lot of business owners, they understand the importance of it so much so that it becomes really heavy and it becomes hard for them to actually do. So I feel like if you do get into that space and you do feel like you are just posting for the sake of posting, then take a step back and I want you to really look at your values and beliefs. So it's your values and your beliefs that drive who you are your uniqueness in this world. And it also drives how you do business and how you create your content and show up for your ideal client as well. So when you're in that space of, I just don't want to do this. This is just so hard and horrible that I just cannot face doing it. Then I really want um, people to have a good look at their values and beliefs. And, you know, we could probably do a whole podcast episode on that in itself, I think, Laura, but to just know that first of all, from an emotional perspective, that's what I would really recommend people do. Because when you do that, like you said, your business flows, it feels more of an extension of you rather than, you know, it being hard or being something that you have to do. So that's kind of my first thing. And then the second thing is from a more practical standpoint, because I like to be practical as well. If we look at the client journey, and think to ourselves at any point in time, there is someone that's in a different stage of that client journey with us. So not everyone's at the beginning of with us at the connect stage. There's some people that are on our email list. There's some people we're nurturing. There's some people that are almost converting. There's a whole range of different people. So our content should reflect that. Our content should reflect that we're taking people on a journey and that there are people at different stages of that journey at any one time. So therefore, like if we're just talking about social media, as an example, Laura, I have a super simple solution. If people are thinking that this is too hard and I'm not sure where to start with it, just post four days a week. And on those four days, do one piece of connect content, one piece of get people on my email list. So subscribe content, do one piece of nurture content, and then do one promotional piece, which is the convert content. So that's just a really super simple, practical way to help you get consistency, but consistency in a way that's purposeful and strategic as well. I love that. It can be simple. And, and as you were saying, sometimes we just have to get out of our heads and, you know, look at it from a different perspective and go, oh, okay. It can be as simple as I only have to post four pieces of content each week. How easy is that? And it just takes a lot of that overwhelm out of it. 
as yeah, well. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah. Do you have any tips for, and maybe this is slightly linked to that question, but when you get stuck in one of those ruts and you feel like you have nothing to say, any tips for you know, how do you perhaps get back to uncovering your values and beliefs and finding the things that it is that you feel that you need to say or the things that you want to, to communicate with your audience? Yeah, and there's probably a couple of tips that I could give you. And um, one is reflection. I think that as busy business owners, we don't do this enough, but it's the little stories in our life that really um, helps make the connection with people. And, you know, it can be the most simple and mundane things that really draw people in and help them identify with who you are and what you stand for as well. So a funny little antidote that I shared a while ago was around something that I did for my daughter that was just crazy above and beyond. I ended up running down the street with no shoes on, trying to chase a bus just to give her her phone that she had to have that day. So, you know, it was just something that I did that was a little bit different <laughs> that I normally wouldn't do every day. But just sharing that story got so much interaction and got so much engagement and people could relate to that whilst they might not necessarily run down the middle of the street, you know, chasing a bus in bare feet with a phone in their hand, they can understand or relate to doing things for others that may be a little bit crazy and or above and beyond. So I'd probably say, just think about something that's happened today, that's happened yesterday in your life and share that as well. And just anything in terms of your values and beliefs. So going back to that, I'm very, very clear on my values and beliefs. I know my top three values and I know my four beliefs and just tapping into one of those is a beautiful way to create a piece of content. So whether that's a core piece of content, so a blog, a podcast or a video, or whether that's your social media or whether it's your email marketing, it doesn't matter. Just tapping into that that value or that particular belief that you have can really help ground you again and make you see why you're creating content for the, in the first place okay so one of my beliefs is that um content has the power to connect us all it's just up to us how we use it so i can really tap into that and think about well, what, what are those things? What does make content powerful? How would my ideal client relate to powerful content? What kinds of things can I teach them about powerful content? Can I tell them a story about a time when I did use powerful content? So those types of things, if you can really go back to your values and beliefs, and if, if someone hasn't done that exercise, I really strongly recommend it because not only from a content perspective, from, but from a business and life perspective, knowing your values and beliefs really helps you make strong decisions. It helps you to kind of relate to a bigger vision or a reason why you're doing things. And it just makes life so much easier as well. So I really recommend that if you haven't done a values or beliefs exercise, then go ahead and do it. And you will really see the difference in how you show up for your ideal clients as well. Do you have a particular resource or anywhere that you, you like to send people or just get them to journal and see what comes up. Yeah. Journaling is a great way, but if you are looking for like a list of values then James clear has a list of values that you can use, but I mean, just Google list of values and you'll get a whole list and you'll be able to choose your top three or five, whatever it is. And it's something that I actually do teach inside of the content effect as well, which is my monthly membership, because I feel as though it's such an important piece in the content and business strategy side of things and that we don't do enough and it's not talked about enough that I thought it was really important to bring that to the membership as well. So you talked um, a little bit there about, I think you used the term core content and then social media. So I'd be interested to know, and again, I know that there is no right way, but do you believe that it is good to have content that is off social media? So maybe that's a blog or a podcast or a YouTube channel, or is social media enough these days? I'd love to hear your perspective on it. Yeah, that's a really good question. So I truly believe that you need to use content as a total content ecosystem. So there is no one piece of core content and there is no one piece of 
content or platform that you should solely focus on. And then a simple reason is we don't know, we don't know where these platforms are going to go in the future or what they're going to do. I mean, Instagram and Facebook throw like new features at us all the time, all the time. Yeah. And it's just, it's really difficult to keep up with. So I, and I, and their focus changes as well. So, you know, Instagram has changed a lot over the time from beautiful static photos of, you know, food to being a real, a real sharing video platform as well. So you just don't know where a particular platform is going to go. So in that respect, I really encourage people to kind of have an ecosystem happening. And I know that that will probably freak people out when I say that, because that's going back to doing all the things. However, I really do encourage people to pick one and then build upon that and then build upon that. So for me, I really believe that the core piece of content should be the first piece of content that you actually create. And the reason being is because all of your other content for your email marketing and for your social media can easily stem from that and easily be reused. So people use the term repurpose or reuse your content. Ugh, I think that sounds so boring, Laura. <laughs> I like to, does it, like who wants to repurpose their content? Oh. So I use the term reimagination and reimagination to me conjures up the possibilities. What else could your content become and what else could it actually be? Let's imagine it into something else. So reimagination is all about taking that blog, the podcast or the video. And I know that people listening will be saying, Mel, Laura, I just do not have the time to create that core piece of content. I know that you're saying it. I really want to encourage people that, um, taking the time to create this core piece of content will actually save you time down the track. Really have to, you know, believe me when I say that because it doesn't have to be a big, difficult thing, creating a core piece of content. I do a blog once a fortnight and it's a 500 word blog. So it's not a massive blog. I've got it down to, you know, half an hour to write it. So there are ways that you can actually play to your strengths in terms of your core content. Like I just started a podcast as well, but I'm finding that really difficult and time consuming, but I know that I'm right at the beginning of that journey. And I know that in time, as I get my processes down and I get the reimagination piece working for it as well, that it'll be far um, more useful to me. But just having that one piece will help drive your email marketing and your social media as well. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, I've shared this as well on the podcast when I first started podcasting, it was a lot of work, but you know, as you were saying with your blog, you've got it down now. I feel that way about the podcast now. I can, you know, bullet point out what I want to say. Good. You become a lot good more to confident know. <laughs> in your voice. You get the, the processes and things in place. And so, you know, it does become a lot quicker to create, record, edit, and put it out there. And I'm sure for people who do you know, videos or YouTube or whatever it might be, there is always that initial learning curve while you get into the groove of things. And once you get over that and you start to embed things, it definitely does get easier. So yes, I can assure you the podcast gets easier too. It is, you know, like anything, when you start something new, there is so much to learn and mm, true. it does get easier. So if you are, if you are in the beginning stages of thinking about creating a blog or a podcast or a YouTube channel, or whatever it might be, it does get easier. So don't yep. let the thought of it being too hard scare you away. And there are always people, always people out there that can help you as well. I had a podcast mentor, Ellen Reynolds Keen. I've interviewed her on the podcast before. There's no way I would have got this podcast up and running if it wasn't for her. So, you know, there are people that can help you shortcut and get out there and create the content as well. Definitely. The other thing that I wanted to say that you were talking about there is I totally agree with, you know, you could create a blog or a podcast and then you can then reimagine, I love that term, you can reimagine that content. So when I create a podcast. I can then grab, you know, obviously when the episodes come out and you probably do something similar, you promote that episode, but then you can grab little snippets and then one, two months down the track, you can grab like one little quote or one little piece of that. And that becomes its own Instagram post or whatever you want to do with it. 
So, you know, particularly on those days where you feel like you have nothing to say or you've run out of time, it's so easy just to grab those little snippets and you've already got a bank of content there. So you're not starting from scratch. Yes, definitely. And so, you know, there's so many different ways that we can reimagine a piece of core content as well. So we can, if we just think about it from an Instagram and Facebook perspective, you know, there's all the different features. We can do a post about it. We can do a post for, about a tip. We can create a quote from it. We can go live about the entire blog, or we can go live about a piece of the blog. There's just so many different ways that you can actually reimagine it. And I guess that that's probably something else to say, Laura, is that when we think about all of the ways that we can reimagine our content, sometimes we go back into <laughs> overwhelm and just go, oh my gosh, it's too, too hard. But just one small thing at a time, just take that one small step today and then build on it and build on it and you will see that momentum come. So when it comes to social media, and this can be a bit of a controversial question sometimes, but I'm interested to know, are you the sort of person who likes to and advocates for planning and batching and having think, everything scheduled out in advance? Or do you think maybe leaving some space to create when you're inspired and in flow is good? Do you have any thoughts or feelings on that? I do. My thoughts and feelings on that is it depends on who you are. I really do believe that. I... <laughs> I am a planner. I am a planner from way back. Me too. I am. <laughs> yeah. Right. So little miss organized. And I'm just like, I was looking at your podcast, um, workflows and the emails that I got. And I was just like, oh, wow, Laura is my type of woman. You know, this is just great. All of this flow, this process it's happening. Yes. This is where, this is what I want to be when I grow up kind of thing, but not everyone is like that. And inside of the content effect, I see this. I see how people approach their content creation differently. However, what I do say, no matter what type of content creator you are, I do have a quiz for that actually, Laura. Oh, awesome. <laughs> so if you want to find out what your content superpower is and how you like to create content and how you can use your strengths and learn to minimize your kryptonite as well, then you can really learn to create content with ease and flow. So I guess to answer your question, no matter whether you are a in the flow kind of person or an organized planned schedule sort of person or somewhere in between that, it is 100% important to have at least a, a plan in terms of what you want to create. Okay. So we do 90 day content planning sessions. So we know what we want to create over the next 90 days. So then when you either get into the flow or whether you have scheduled that day into write all your content and plan it, when that day comes, you know exactly what you want to write about, you know, what you need to write about and you know how to relate your stories back to those themes or those things that you're going to write about. Because when we don't do that, that's when it doesn't become purposeful. That's when we're creating content for content's sake, even when we're in the flow. I know that people think that when we're in the flow, then that is where the most amazing content comes out. And my ideal client needs to know about it right now, right this very second, which may be the truth in some respects, but I also think that there is a time and place for that kind of share as well. Yes, we do get um, these inspirational moments where we create content that is so freaking amazing that we just want to share it with our ideal client straight away. But if there is no um, purpose behind it, then our ideal client kind of goes, oh, that's a nice piece of content. That was a nice story to read, M move on. Like there is no, they don't understand where it actually fits or where they're actually being led with that piece of content. So I really do encourage no matter what type of content creator you are, that you really do have a plan in place of some description. I love that. I love that. I, people typically are one, one extreme or the other, I find, <laughs> and you know, pretty much as you just said, I always just try and encourage my clients to allow space for a bit of both. So if they're very mm. much, I just allow it to flow through me. That's great. When it does harness it and put it somewhere safe, and then you can plan and, you know, release that as, as you need to. So yes. yes, I love, I love that. So I can't believe we've already been talking for about half an hour. <laughs> we could literally talk for hours. 
do you have any last um, tips or words of wisdom that you would like to share with people listening in today? I really encourage people to lean into the concept of powerful content. So powerful content is about creating and sharing content that is really mindful of the person who's consuming it, first of all. So it's strategic, it's purposeful, and we're thinking about that human on the other end of the content that we create but in a way that actually feels right for you. And I think that everything that we've been taught about content marketing is all about our ideal client. So know who they are, know their problems, know the transformations, know the solutions, get inside their head. Yes, do all of those things. However, we often forget about the missing piece being us. And we really need to enjoy what we're doing and we need to be able to bring that to the table when it comes to our content and our business as well. So I just want people to think about how they're creating content. Are they creating it for good or for evil? So are they doing it with, <laughs> with actually, you know, someone from their heart with authenticity, with a real genuine want to serve and show up and help their ideal client, or are they just kind of using their content to present this false perception of the world, basically, you know, so are you using it for good or are you using it for evil? I want you to think about whether you're using it for purpose or whether you're just adding to the noise. So are you just adding to this whole clutter of content out there or are you standing up and standing out because of who you are and what you believe in and what you want to bring to the table? And then the last piece is whether you're using it for impact or whether you're using it for self-promotion. Now content, yes, we need to use content to promote ourselves, but I think that there is a difference between promotion and self-promotion. And that is the meaning behind our content and is the meaning of what we, or our intention of how we intend to, to show up for our ideal client. So I guess that I really want people to tap into knowing that it's okay to do it your way. I guess that's the bottom line. Yes. Bring yourself to the table and it's okay to do it however you want to do it. Ah, oh, I love that. And yes, it's something I say all of the time. It's your business, your rules. You get to do things in the way that works best for you. And thank you so much. There was so much juicy information in there. If people would like to come and hang out with you online or check out your podcast, where is the best place for people to come and find you? Yes. So on Instagram, I love hanging out there and Facebook. My handle is at Meld Business on both of those. And my podcast, which I've just released, is the Powerful Content Podcast. Awesome. Well, I will make sure that we pop all of those links in the show notes so that people can come and hang out with you. I highly recommend having a listen to your podcast. It's, it's great. I've listened to most of the episodes so far and I'm really enjoying it. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode. I hoped that you loved hearing from Mel as much as I loved chatting with her. If you would like to find out more about Mel, go and hang out with her online. You can find links to her Instagram, her podcast, and her free quiz in the show notes for this episode. And of course, if you got value from this episode, both Mel and I would be so grateful if you could share it on your social media or with your biz besties. Thanks so much for tuning in and I will catch you next week.